Hi everyone, in this video I will talk about the differences between an acoustic kick drum and an electronic kick pad. But I will not compare them uh, sound-wise, I will compare them mechanically, which is much more important for technique. For these 23 years that I am drumming, I have practiced my feet 90% with acoustic drums and maybe 9% with air drumming and just 1% with kick pads. So I got very used to the feeling of an acoustic kick, the rebounds of it, the weight of it, even the sizes. My kick drums always were 22 inches, so when I play with even 20 inches kick, I feel a bit different. And because lack of exercises which I made with kick drum pads, uh, I'm not familiar with that uh, kick pad rebounds. My muscles get so much used to my own acoustic kick drums. Uh, my head tightness uh, and rebounds, except my pedal settings, uh, I realize that when I'm playing on an electronic kick pad, the patterns which have high difficulty level for me, I can't play like I'm playing on acoustic kicks. For me, kick pads have those problems. First of all, they swing a lot. So this is very different rebounds feeling that you have on an acoustic kick drum. This is Roland KD9 model, one of the cheapest model of Roland, which is very practical to use. But as you see, like all kick pads, it swings when you play. You can reduce the swing with putting some weight onto your kick pad and it works. But it still swings. And it's not just for this model. All kick pads, even the big pads, have this swinging. But if you play with ankle motion or flat foot techniques for faster kick drums but with weaker strokes, pads can be more suitable for you to play. They don't swing so much. But with stronger strokes, even with weight, it still swings. Two, they usually have harder heads, so I suggest you to usually use pads which have mesh heads. They are a bit closer to the drum head feeling. And there are of course these kind of electronic pad models, which are the closest to acoustic feeling, but as you guess, they are a bit expensive. I'm just telling you, just be aware of these things. If you get used to it so much, after some years, like 5 years, 10 years maybe, you may have small problems while playing on an acoustic drum kit. Even not just with the kick pads, especially with cymbals, and maybe a bit snare and thumbs too. This lesson of the seri may seem to be very detailed, but I think this can be something really important for some drummers. I just wanted to make a separate video about this on my double bass drumming lesson seri, because some of you, maybe a lot of you, might not have an acoustic drum kit to rehearse and always are practicing with electronic drum kit uh, or just with drum pads. Which is okay, I have worked 7 years on my computer chair, even without pads. But those times I was rehearsing as much as possible on acoustic kits by hiring studios. As a conclusion, I'm not telling you throw away your electronic kit or pads and uh, go get an acoustic drum kit. No, of course not. Continue what you are doing with your electronic kit or pads. Just be aware of the situation. When you have chance, rehearse with acoustic drum kits too, as much as possible. And teach your muscles those tiny differences between them, so when several years pass, your muscle memory can adapt both of them easily. And some drummers who have worked much more with pads rather than acoustic kicks, um, if you record something on acoustic drum kit and can't play what exactly you need to play, for example, uh, toughest patterns that you can play at home with your pads, but you can't play on acoustic drum kits, 
don't get demoralized. It can be, it's okay. And you will get used to it. I hope this video helps you to understand the differences between them. You have to experience and understand those um, slight differences by yourself. So the next video will be the most common mistake on double bass drumming. And in my opinion, it will be the most important lesson of this series. So see you in the next video.